What's up guys, welcome to BitGlen again. Sorry if my voice cuts in and out today, I'm still suffering with a cold, so um, I'm going to try my best to fight for it. So um, it's been quite an eventful uh, 12 hours since I did my last video. I had loads of conversation with um, someone that actually works at Environ and um, there's been a few developments since I did my video yesterday, um, which obviously was titled um, Environ 150 million dollar heist which was from a verdict of a review of the ICO Environ through a website called hack.com, um, which I talked about in my previous video from yesterday. And uh, since then, um, I actually posted it on Environ's Facebook group that I'm a part of um, to see what their thoughts were, what they had to say about it. So you can see here... Um, Oh, I spelled that wrong, envious. It's obviously an autocorrect. On the hack.com verdict of this ICO, um, which I mentioned in my YouTube, made some. he brought up some valid good points. So um, someone from Environ commented back saying, Hi Glenn, the author tried to threaten us and extort us. I don't think he is happy with the results. We are all welcome to see the evidence of this that was posted on Telegram as it happened, so you can easily find the record of it and show it has not been doctored image. Um, so this was an image that was posted, so this is the, I assume, the author of that hack.com uh, review of, of Environ. How about I let you choose two pieces of information that you can convince me that this isn't a $150 million heist before I write those words in my hacked article. And a gentleman called Lorette, who works at Environ, apparently he's their um, sort of social media um, community manager. Are you threatening me? And he said, with what? That says, it seems very highly inappropriate. You're funny, give me two pieces of information that show the project is real. You're asking, if I'm threatening you, I'm not, I'm giving you a chance. That is a weird line you've just took. You just threaten me, your language suggests a power play, e.g. letting me do something before, they are, before there are consequences. You're not supposed to be a sensitive bitch. So, uh, to me, this is all very... Uh, I can see where the guy's going with it. He's saying that, you know, please show me some information that... Um, shows that you're not actually after everyone's money and that you've got proof of this, this and this. Um, obviously the person at Environ hasn't liked this stance and then it's got very um, uh, unprofessional. That's probably the best word, a bit unprofessional really. So they've posted that on my question and a couple of people, we don't want to see this sort of thing. We actually want to see, you know, what you're doing, blah, 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 blah. I don't use Telegram. So it seems like the main way that they want to communicate with people is actually through Telegram and you get the odd updates through Facebook and Twitter. So I actually joined Telegram. I'm not, uh, I wasn't with them before, so I've never really known how to use it. It seems like a WhatsApp, but for, I don't know, businesses. <laughs> <coughs> Hey guys, sorry, I was having a coughing fit there. <laughs> Put back to normal now, hopefully. So anyway, uh, Telegram. Loads of messages were coming through through Telegram. It's a bit like a WhatsApp conversation. Thousands of people all in there asking similar questions. Um, obviously, concerns that they have. Predominantly, most of them are just, I'm in this country, can I join? And what's the minimum uh, investment? When will it roll out? When will we get our first payments? Pretty much all the standard questions that I asked probably two or three days ago. Um, you know, so not not having a dig at anyone in there because obviously they need to find out their information. That's probably the best way to do it. So I woke up this morning and I had a message from uh, the gentleman called Lorette who works at Environ. And he said, hey, Glenn, or hey, rather, uh, if you wanted to cover the hack.com article, I have two images for you. Maybe you could give some context on your coverage. By the way, it'd be nice if you contacted us before writing inflammatory headlines. I'll tell you what I said to that in a second. Um, but anyway, we've got these two images. Obviously, one I've already shown you, him saying, are you threatening me? And he's, you know, he's saying, what are you talking about? You're not meant to be a sensitive bitch. <laughs> um, then in the next image, there we go. So 
sorry, I recorded this off my phone and put it on the laptop so I could show you it as I was talking into the screen. Um, I know about NDAs, so does my butthole. I'm not going to put the $150 million heist thing. So at this point, he's saying he will not mention the $150 million heist. I bet I have way less influence than I think anyway. I'm going to give you a 2.5 out of 10 and then present whatever I've got without calling you a hoax. I'm disappointed in myself. Good night. So I don't know what's happened in between that last image and this image. But for some reason, the guy at hack.com seems to have taken a back stance and said, actually, I won't be as aggressive as that. Thank you for your time. Yada, yada, yada. And Lorenz texts back saying, uh, do you feel it's right for your readers? Oh, sorry. Do what you feel is right for readers. That's, that's quite a good response. There will be some mainstream press coming in the next few days. I'm sure your readers will enjoy that too. Good night. So he's, he's implying then that we're going to get some sort of updates and um, news coming out in the next few days from Environ. Um, but anyway, since that conversation happened... That guy's then gone on to hacks.com and he's done it. He's gone and put, this is a $150 million heist, be wary, blah, 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 and the staff are this, this, and that. Um, so he's gone completely against what um, he's actually said in this conversation here. So I, obviously I don't know what's happened in between that and I'm not going to really comment on that. So anyway, my, from my stance, obviously I'm creating these YouTube videos because I'm talking to you guys. The other day, obviously, I'm brand new to ICOs. I'd never heard of ICOs until about four or five days ago. So, um, obviously, I'm learning as much as I can. I am literally spending, you guys don't probably won't understand, I'm spending all of my spare time reading and watching and replying to as much information that is put in front of me. Um, even when I go toilet, I'm sitting there on my phone reading articles about different ICOs and how they work and what the plus and downsides are and everything I can. And obviously, when I'm trying to talk in these videos, I'm trying to say it in a very um, clear and easy to understand way because I know there'll be people watching this and they'll go, what's he going on about? So, uh, you know, I, I don't think my videos are, are good enough content yet for people that are like... Um, you know, that are really heavily involved in the cryptocurrency world, they'll probably watch my video and go, this guy's amateur, he doesn't know what he's talking about, and they probably won't watch my videos. The, the people that are watching my videos are probably people that are thinking, yeah, actually, I'm starting, and so is this guy. Actually, I'm just going to watch what he's doing. So really, you're learning with... But anyway, so I've got these conversations, and um, I've said to Laurent, I will cover this in my next video, which is obviously this video you're watching, and... Uh, I do explain my thoughts in the video. I'm just trying to do as much research and get as much truth from different sources of info that is available to, available to me on the net. Um, I have been, so I misspelled that, people that are investing in your ICO based on my recommendation. So when I read that Environ could be a $150 million heist, I feel it's the right thing to do for people watching my content so that they can make their best informed decision. I hope this makes sense. So basically, I'm trying to get across that um, I've actually got my friend Andy, uh, my friend Nathan, um, and my friend Dan all involved in um, investing in IC this up, up and coming ICO. And they're all basing their decision on me. Uh, if I went to them today and said, actually, I've just realized they're a scam, don't do it, they, they won't do it. If I said, actually, this is really good, I think you should double the amount of money you put in, they'll do that. So I feel very uh, under pressure now because not only am I sort of wasting my money if something goes wrong, I'm also wasting their money and they're going to say, Glenn, you're an idiot and I'm never listening to you again and yada, yada, yada. So I feel like more pressure than, say, someone at home just looking to spend their own money. And as well as that, obviously, I started doing this YouTube journey on this YouTube channel um, and obviously I, I'm learning as I go along and the things I'm saying, oh, look, this is a good ICO, um, I'm thinking of investing in them. I'm getting messages now from people, um, and you'll know who you are out there, and uh, I think that's great, this is exactly what I wanted to start off, a community of people all trying to help each other, and um, they're actually saying, Glenn, yeah, actually I'm thinking of doing that as well, and I'm going to put in this much, so now I feel like, God, now there's these strangers basing their decisions, which don't, please don't base your decisions on what I say, because <laughs> that puts me even under more scrutiny, but um 
yeah, I just felt like I'm under more pressure now to present the facts as I, as I'm reading them um, in a, cl a clear and precise way. So um, that's why I did the video, and um, I didn't mean to put anyone off investing in it or tarnish the name, but obviously I put in the title. Um, $150 million heist with a question mark and then I even in the video say so yeah I'm trying to just present the facts as best I can in the most uh, honest way you know that I can so that you guys watching this or even my friends that might, are watching this as well can actually say oh do you know what I agree with Glenn with this but I don't agree with him with that and that article that he present me I would have never have read that if it weren't for Glenn showing it to me uh, it's actually put me off or it's you know maybe I'd it's maybe it's more encouraging so um I tried to um give my honest opinion on in his verdict on hack.com he said about people being too young I think and the supply chain and what was the other thing uh, experience in the staff or something like that and I sort of gave my take on all those things and some things I tried to flip around on a, as a positive because um, I, I, I didn't you know I didn't understand it. the supply chain thing uh, I did get so um, anyway let's let's have a little little read so uh, he said sure thing I don't mind at all I encourage people to do as much research as possible I did the same thing when I first found out about Environ I also gladly answer any questions or do any interview with you if you like, which I'd love to do an interview. Um, I don't know how I'd do that. I mean, I'm quite new to YouTube, but I'm sure I could figure it out. Um, it was greatly disappointing for me to get threatened with bad review by someone and then talk to him for half an hour, have the guy tell me unsolicited that he would not publish those words and apologize to me. Then go ahead and slam us. I'm working way too hard to build a community to have people foul it up because I don't play by their game, which, to be fair, something that I did think, when I was reading through the Telegram uh, conversation, this is one, just me and this guy, um, there was, uh, there's obviously the main one where there's like 5,000 people in there, and if I was setting up a new company, and I was reading some of the feedback, I would have a lot of days where I'd think, Do you know what, what is the point, because you get probably two or three people, nice people, saying this is a really good investment, can't wait, I'm really excited for it. And they say, like, oh, thanks for your support, blah, blah, blah. You get a lot of people saying, oh, you're not very upfront with this, you're on it, you're, you're a scam. You, you know, you're you're not real, you don't exist. You're based in China, you're this, you're that, blah, 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 blah. And they get that a lot. So me obviously adding to that, saying, actually, I've just seen this article where you're a scam, you know, obviously I'm not helping out in any way, but I'm just trying to, do the right thing by my friends and viewers. So um, I can see it from their point of view. They must get, they must think, why the hell are we doing this? Why not just go to some multi-millionaires and just say, look, do you want to invest in this and just let them reap the rewards? But they're letting the general public uh, invest in them. And obviously the general public ask a lot of general questions. So I'm afraid that's, that's the way it's going to go. Um, so that's something to bear in mind if you ever want to start an ICO. Oh, but thanks for getting back to me, Laurent. You must be getting bombarded with loads of questions at the moment because that conversation is literally like the other one, the, the group one is just, if I check my phone now, there's probably like another 100 people commented on me and that. Um, I don't mind me, uh, if you don't mind me asking what's your position because in Environ and how long have you been working for them? At this point in time, I don't know who this guy is. Um, I'm thinking, is he just a guy that works for him or is he someone that's just championing him for some reason? Um, and I agree with you. It seems very, uh, he's gone about doing his career in a very unprofessional way. And it's a shame that it could affect other investors. But I'm guessing when you announce the ICO, you must have planned for some criticism and negativity. So whenever, if I stood here and said, I'm going to start, you know, I'm going to start this ICO where we do this, this, this. I'm going to get shot down straight away. People are going to say, have you thought about the software side, the hardware side, the currency? How are you going to do the blockchain? I'd get shot down straight away. And I assume these guys coming into it, they've come up with this great idea and they said, yeah, 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 it's fantastic. We're going to do this. And I've got a really good feeling about it. And then they're getting all these questions. Well, what about this? What about this? What about this? Um, which I think is great because, you know, I... I we never see the ins and outs of Google or YouTube, do we? So, you know, you go on YouTube one day and things changed and no one knows about it. But whereas this is like, I'm actually seeing their thought process and uh, how people are coming to 
find out information. Uh, I just think it's really interesting, to be honest. Um, he's put, I'm leading the charge in the community team as a director of community. We're handling over a thousand uh, comments and messages on a day on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc., as well as email and get my own and my personal favourite, this 5K Telegram group. Uh, I came in at the end of October, blah, 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 blah. Um, I'll probably fast forward a lot of this because he's talking about his own life and I don't want to go too much into his own stuff. Um, he mentioned here about he gets a lot of negativity, um, but he made a good point in here that I want to point out. Um, I started asking about... Da, 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 da. Ah, so here it is. However, this isn't a four-person startup. We are building a company that is meant to be a multinational enterprise in the next year. We can't shoot from the hip. Ask Sony for their supply chain pricing and see what happens. Sony is not asking you to put in £50,000 of your hard-earned money into their company in seven days, so I see it from every side. So, obviously, he's saying that a lot of the criticisms is how you're getting hold of these GPUs and how you're getting hold of these ant miners and how you're going to implement that into hundreds of these containers. How are you going to do that over a period of time? And they haven't answered that question. They haven't said, this is how we're doing it. This is what we've been promised or, you know. And they're basically saying, if you go to any company, if you went to Apple and said, well, how much are you paying for your, you know, screens from Samsung? Um, you'll find that they probably won't tear. Other people normally have to do a bit of digging and finding out, and then they post it on YouTube, and, uh, and that's how we all find out about it. Um, but they're saying they, you know, they can't just blurt out um, information out there that could harm another company. I suppose that's that's my take on it. And to be honest, I agree with them. Look, if if they've got something in place, a agreement, a sales, you know, like an order that they made six months ago, um, that's for them to do. I don't want to know about all that. I want to know what day am I going to receive, start receiving my money? How much are the things going to be worth in the future? Um, everyone wants to know every single detail of this business inside and out. And unfortunately, when you're dealing with the general public, if you was a business like I, you know, I'm self-employed, if I went to the bank, I, I would have a bank manager or a finance manager and I would just be telling him every in and out of my business because obviously he's the one who's going to lend me the money. So I'm only telling one person. And I've and normally you're in a confidentiality, you're in a room that no information gets passed on. Um, so you can be open with that person. When you start asking 500,000 people for money, um, and you're getting 500,000 different views and questions and, well, what about this, what about this? You can't tell all of them every detail of your business because, <laughs> you know, that obviously that's going to very quickly get to your main competitors, get to other people, and um, it may ruin your um, reputation with another company. If people are putting in orders with ant miners and they can't get hold of one or two, but this company are getting old of two, three hundred, you know, you might say, well, how, what about my order? Why are they getting this before me? And, you know, stuff like that. So that's my take on it. Uh, take from it what you will. Um, we did have a little conversation after about how long the MMU, so the actual units take to build. Obviously, they've built one at the minute and they're in the process of building the second one. Um, and he was saying that once the actual production line actually gets going... Once a production line gets going, um, they're actually going to have sort of a unit popping out every couple of hours. And I assume that's because they're going to have different stages on a production line. That's going to take, I assume, a few weeks to get perfected. And then he was saying you'll see, start seeing one come off. It's like a car. A car actually takes three months, but actually one comes off every sort of couple of minutes, doesn't it? So, um, you know, if you started, if you followed the process of one unit all the way through to the end of the production line that might take a few weeks but actually in that few weeks probably you know 14 other ones have been finished off so then re technically there's one coming off every day um, but he's saying that they're going to have quite a lot coming out in a very short period of time which is <laughs> great news for us investors because the more mining equipment they get sent out there the higher the returns we're going to start getting every week 
um, which apparently is going to be on January the 10th. So if you invest in this company on December the 1st, you'll start receiving your dividends from mining of, um, on January the 10th. That's what they're saying the first payment date will be. The, the payments are actually tied. This is quite clever, actually. I only found this out through reading the Telegram post as well. They're tied to the tokens. And what I mean by that is to say I buy 10 tokens, I have them in my Ether wallet. I receive 10 lots of mining into my account every week. If I gave them tokens, the EVN tokens, if I gave them to my wife and she put them in her wallet or a friend, the dividends of the mining go straight to the, their wallet. I don't need to set, fill out a form and say, I assume anyway, um, oh, I've transferred my details over. Can you now give the proceedings to this person? So that creates, obviously, a great opportunity to, in the future, if, obviously, mining becomes scarce, like it is on Genesis Mining, and this is my way of thinking at the moment. I may be wrong. These shares... Are, are going on sale for 70 cent a share on December the 1st. They then go up to $1 um, a token. Oh, sorry, I keep mixing shares and tokens. $1 a token. Um, and then they'll, after December the 31st, they won't make it. There's, that's it. There's no more. So if they only sell 100 million of the tokens, they're, they're, that's how many tokens will be in circulation, from my understanding. The only way you're going to be able to get a token for this business later on is buying one off someone else. Now, for me, this creates a demand for this token because if you look at other websites like Genesis Mining, a lot of their contracts are sold out until March next year already. And you think that's only going to get worse every time they release one. The next one will probably next lot of contracts will be available for April next year, and they'll sell out and so forth, so forth. So if you actually want to get hold of some mining, you've then got to go to other websites, or you know, like that might not be as reputable. Um, I think Hash Power they offer contracts as well. Um, I've never used them to be honest. Um, so you're going to have to then, if you want, if this does actually work out a good sort of return month, week in, week out, the only way you're going to be able to get one of these tokens is buying one off me or, you know, someone else is invested in them. And I'm not going to want $1 back from them. I'm going to want, you know, $5 a share. I don't know. Like, it all, it all depends on how well this company perform and how well they do. So I feel like it's, um, if they follow through and do the mining, because mining is such a hot thing at the minute, especially for the next... I would say for the next five years, mining is going to be um, a sought after uh, business to be a part of because until the coins are at a point where it's so hard to mine from them that it's not profitable, uh, at that point, their mining will die off. This, you know, th these guys will die off and it'll be, uh, there'll be no point in doing it. But between now and then, until that line, them two lines cross, um, there's going to be a high demand. So, I personally think that this is a good token to have and I still believe in the um, ICO, so I'm still investing in it. Um, over the last, uh, say, 24 hours, not even that, 12 hours, wherever it has been, my opinion of this ICO has gone up and down, up and down. And um, I can say now, and this is why I've done my video later on in the day, it's half one now. I normally do these at sort of 10 in the morning while my wife's out. But doing the conversations today, talking to Enviant and uh, looking into it myself, um, I feel a lot more confident in this brand, in this company, than I ever did before. So that's my that's my view on it. Um, let me know what you think down below. I've been talking for quite a while now, so um, I better wrap this up, I suppose. But uh, let me know. There was saying else I wanted to talk about, but I can't remember what it is now. But let me know what you think down below. Please comment any thoughts that you have. Uh, message me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all BitGlen. Subscribe down below so you see more videos like this. 
Um, I'm hoping to get to 100 subscribers um, as fast as possible. Hopefully, maybe by the end of this year. Who knows? We've only got a month left, but I'm at 20 already and I've been doing it for one week. So if I can, uh, over the next five weeks, get another 20 a week, that would be fantastic. 100 subscribers in a couple months. Um, I know that with YouTube channels, normally they YouTube sort of suggests if you can get 100 subscribers within the first year, then you're doing pretty well. So if I can get 100 in a few months, then um, then I'll be over the moon, to be honest. So uh, let's let's see how we go. Share this with your friends. Um, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of BitGlim. See you later, guys. Bye.